Hey, what's up, guys? David Glenn of davidglennrecording.com and theproaudiophiles.com coming back with what I'm calling part two of our look into the Waves Butch Vig vocal plugin, the new signature series from Waves. And uh, I'm really digging it. We're going to take a look deeper into what's going on, and I'm going to show you how to um, pull off some of these same techniques with stock or free plugins. And that's not to take away from the beauty that is the Butch Vig plugin, but I want you to understand the concepts and the techniques going on behind the scenes of the plugin so that you have another arsenal of tools to go to, whether you buy the plugin and you use it, which I'm doing, I think it's great, or you, um, it's not really in the budget right now and you just want to stick to the tools you've got. Maybe you're doing this as a hobby and you don't want to invest too much into your plugins by all means. But even more important is the concepts are the concepts and the strategies and the techniques going into it. So we're going to break that down. First things first, we're going to hit play. I've got a Butch lead track named after uh, Butch Vig himself here. And we've got nothing but the Butch Vig plugin. I'm actually going to, uh, we'll leave those alone for now. We'll talk about them later. But then we're going to look at the uh, free lead audio track, just a mono audio track, and I'm going to go through some options for you. And then we've got a uh, focus track down here that we'll talk about in a minute. So here's the uh, song as it was uh, just kind of thrown together. I did this in the first part, uh, mixed this vocal at this section, and uh, let's take a listen to that. Because I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us, but... It ain't easy when your mind don't work like that. Okay, pretty cool, right? So moving from that plugin, I'm gonna leave it up here on the screen, and we're gonna talk about each of the model the modules and how you can accomplish that with some free plugins or stock plugins. Actually, I lie. The only one I'm gonna use uh, is is uh, the Pro Q2, and that's only because I know it for time sake, tutorial sake. I know all the keyboard shortcuts, but you can accomplish these same exact moves with your stock EQ, I guarantee it. So first thing out of the gate, what we looked at was the uh, compression and the low cut filter here. So this filter that was dialed in to about 95 or 100 or so, uh, if you watch the Waves video, they talk about having a little bit of a bump in the filter. And what that means is on this low cut high pass filter here, if we engage that, there's a little bit of a bump there. So the cue all the way at the detent position would be just flat and then it drops off. And so what they've done is they've increased that a little bit so there's a gain increase at the tail end of the filter. So if we take that and we kind of scoop up on his vocal, we're going to get rid of the lows, but we're also gonna be boosting a little bit where we begin the cut. So let's take a look at that. Let's put solo. And uh, we're just going to scoop this up to that same frequency. Because I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us. But. Okay. So you can see how we're cutting all of the junk down low that we don't need. Could, you know, accidentally hit the microphone and get a blast of sub frequencies, step on the mic, um, air conditioning rumble, any of that stuff. It's just taking up headroom. We don't need it. It's not contributing to the vocal sound. So we're just going to get rid of it. And we've got this little bit of a bump there. You can see there's not really much happening. You've got the Pro-Q2 as an analyzer, so we can see there's not much happening before uh, 120, 150, somewhere in there. But uh, totally a taste thing. You can ride this up. You could just set it at about 100, just kind of clean up and get rid of the lows. Moving on from that, the we're going to come back to that EQ, but the next thing I want to look at is uh, the tube saturation or solid state saturation. Now, depending upon your DAW, the plugin will be different, but we have a couple of character choices in Pro Tools, one being lo-fi. And my buddy Matthew Weiss has covered this a little bit, we talked about mixing some hip hop vocals and using the distortion parameter here. And so we're gonna hit that and uh, check out what that's gonna do. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us, but it ain't easy when your mind don't work like that. Okay, so you hear it coming forward a little bit. It's a little bit of a volume difference, so forgive me for that. But you're getting some grit, getting a little bit of character to it, and you could always drive it more. Because I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us. But it ain't easy when your mind... And that decision is going to come into play a little bit better once we clean up the vocal and we get some compression going on. So we're actually gonna drop that back down 
And then I'm going to come over here to um, we're bypass that. We're going to skip over saturation knob and we're going to go to VMR. Now, VMR, uh, to save some of the, the hate mail, uh, this is free if you have an iLock. So you have to have an iLock, but even if you don't have an iLock, I recommend go pick up an iLock. Fight your pride. Go get an iLock and get Revival because this thing is mad awesome. So we're going to take a look at this Shimmer knob first, and this is going to be adding um, both EQ and character. So I'm using this almost as like saturation, but this is uh, also going to come into play with presence. So let's take a listen to that. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us, but it ain't easy when your mind don't work like that. Okay, so it seems subtle, and it's gonna get better whenever we add some compression. But now, what what happens when I bypass it? Even with this just dry vocal that we're dealing with. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us, but. It ain't easy when your mind don't work like Pretty gnarly, right? So that one's doing some good stuff. We'll put that away and we're gonna take a look at uh, We'll come back to DSing. We're gonna take a look at this compression Let's get the volume up so we can start to hear what we're working with. We're gonna drive this compressor This is the uh, 1176 from uh, Avid just got the bomb factory 1176 and we're gonna go for some uh, some pretty hefty compression. Let's take a look and, and see what we can get. Usually what I'll do with the 1176 is I'll um, kind of set a slow attack and then throw a really, really fast release and then just bring it back a little bit so that I get uh, that uh, little bit of grit distortion that comes with a super fast release. Get that pulled back a little bit. Seems a little smoother. Let's hear that. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us, but it ain't easy when your mind don't work like Okay, so let's hear that before the compression. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out with it. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there. Okay, so now we're getting some of those lows are enhanced. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my EQ and I'm gonna take a look at this bump and see if it's hurting me. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there. For us. And that feels a little bit better, getting rid of some of that stuff I don't need in his vocal. And uh, and again, we're doing this in solo so I can explain the concepts to you, but you want to make sure that you're checking in reference to the music, what you're working on um, is, is a huge part of mixing that vocal in. So then what I'm going to do on the back end, because I have a feeling that that compressor with the Butch Vig plug-in is uh, parallel compression. I may be wrong, but I'm thinking it's going to be parallel compression, and there's going to be something a little bit more juicy going on besides just one compressor. So what I've got is just a stock Digi compressor from Avid here. I said Digi, but uh, you old school guys will know what I'm talking about. The ratio is up at 100 to 1, just limiting this, and uh, we're going to see what we can get with just kind of cleaning it up a little bit more. Because I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us, but... It ain't easy when your mind don't work like that. Okay, so another 3, 4 dB. For peaks, it could get a little bit hotter. No big deal. And uh, you can check those settings. We've got kind of a fast attack, fast release, similar to the 1176, except the ratio is extremely high. We're limiting, and uh, we're making up that gain here. Just dialing in so that we get the vibe that we want with the threshold. Nothing fancy there. And then the two compressors together sound like this. Here's without it. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there. I'm with them. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us. Okay, and so I'm still getting a little bit too much of the lows. So in the case of the Waves plugin where we're doing a low cut, we're getting rid of it and it sounds good. Here I might actually get rid of using that. And again, the flexibility of using multiple plugins, I can get rid of that bump and see what I get from this. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us, but it ain't easy. And I'm actually gonna even cut a little bit. So just to my ear, I feel like I can use less lows. Now that we've got some compression and we have it back up to level, I'm gonna come over here to lo-fi and I'm gonna engage that and let's take a listen to what that's doing. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there. With point one, it jumps out to the, of the speakers here. Let's bypass it and hear that. Cause I want to believe that. 
Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there. Let's come back out here. Let's push it a little harder. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us. But it ain't easy when your mind don't work like that. And you start to hear it get kind of gritty, get that grainy feeling going on. And that's pretty cool. You've got other options. Noise probably wouldn't be good for the vocal. Uh, saturation may be okay. It darkens it up quite a bit. But this distortion is a great option if you're going for that gain. I'm going to back it off just a little bit. And then we're going to move on. Uh, we're going to bypass that. I'm going to show you saturation knob because this can be really awesome as well. And you get a frequency control here. So let's check that in the neutral position. Because I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us. But... It ain't easy when your mind don't work like that. Yeah, Cuz I a bit much there. Cuz I want to believe that there's Okay, and then what I would equate the soft tube saturation knob to would be having the high cut not quite the same, but over here we looked at the uh, Butch Vig being able to cut the highs out of just the saturation uh, channel in series there. So what I would equate this to is being able to, um, instead of going high with the saturation, would be keeping it neutral or even coming down and using it in the low setting so that the highs aren't as heavily impacted. So let's listen to the different uh, controls there. Because I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there. That's a bit extreme. I'm pushing it so you guys can hear the difference. Here's neutral. Because I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there. Not affecting the highs as much, and then the lows won't even affect the mid range quite the same. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us, but it. Cool. So you can pick that up for free in Google Soft Tube Saturation Knob. That one's a good choice. I'm gonna back that down. I think I liked what was going on with Lo Fi, so I'm gonna bring that in. Come over here to VMR. Now, again, VMR is character and uh, tone, but it's also gonna be that presence that we're looking at right here with the Butch Vig. So let's dial that in now that we Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us, but... And then that was out, so now we're gonna dial it in. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us, but... It ain't easy when your mind don't work like that. Pretty gnarly. I like what that's doing. So it's subtle, but we're getting some character and we get some top end from it. I'm going to keep that. But what I notice is we're, um, we're getting a little bit sibilant from the VMR. So I'm going to pull up in a de -esser. And the Butch Vig de -esser, it's stuck at 6K. And so um, with the stock de you're going to be able to slide that around and get multiple frequency ranges in the picture. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to listen with the digi stock uh, de -esser here, and I'm going to try to find that spot, kind of like what we did in the first video. Let's select from here to there, somewhere in there should be good. Okay, and so I can dial in the range, and I'm looking at uh, which frequency is affected. So by listening, I'm only hearing 6K. And so there's still quite a bit going on up around 7, even up to 8 probably. I would say that's more in line with the annoyingness of it. So we'll go 7.5, split the difference a little bit. And now I can undo the listen button there and come over here to the range and pull it down to meet my needs. More than what I see out, 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 more than. And so that range knob sounds like that's more like what we're controlling here by boosting the de-esser parameter in the Butch Vig plugin. But you saw how you can have greater control using your stock plugin. So there's a quick walkthrough on de-essing. Honestly, with de-essing, what I would probably do is go throughout this track and uh, highlight the S's and pull them down 3 or 4 dB so that they're not quite as uh, loud going into the EQ and compression over here in the plugin chain. 
Uh, and then I may DS a little bit here, maybe not quite that much, but maybe three or four dB, just kind of kiss it. And then moving past the compressors, we're gonna look at boosting frequencies now, and then we're gonna look maybe even at DSing again to where I can get a little bit more uh, in with that particular frequency area and control it. So blabbing a little bit, but let's move on to boosting some frequencies. Here's another instance of Pro-Q after our compressors, and I've got the low frequency, which is about what this frequency band is uh, boosting. I've got the presence band up at about 3K, and then we have the air up at around, around 14K. And we're gonna just go one by one. Let's first lift uh, some presence into this vocal. And let's come back and triple click, select that region, and let's get some presence. I don't know where I'll go when I go. And we'll zoom in on just that verse there. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us. Okay, so we have some nice presence from just pulling that up a few dB. Let's go to the air. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us. But it ain't easy when your mind don't work. Okay, so now we got a little bit of air in. It sounds pretty darn good. Let me get rid of that visual for us with the analyzer. I dig it, but not for this tutorial. Okay, and now we have some lows. So I don't know that we want any lows. We'll have to listen in the context of the track back for all of this, but if we did want some lows, there's around 250 or so. We could come in here and boost. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us. Okay, so it doesn't sound bad to get a little bit of warmth back into it, but those are the free three frequency points that we're looking at here with the low presence in air. So you can see on your stock EQ, you can pull that open and uh, get pretty far with it. Now we did boost some top end and I talked about the de -esser. So here's that de -esser again. And uh, we can go, we could listen again, we could find what's bothering us and we can get really focused on that frequency and then pull it back. Let's hear uh, what the de could do. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us, but Okay, and you can see the reduction over here, how much you're reducing those S's. And uh, just another level of control that uh, the Waves actually doesn't have. But like I said in the first video, um, if I'm using the Butch Vig vocal plugin, I would maybe DS before it, DS after it, do a little bit of clip gain action, tons of ways to treat the S's, uh, to not necessarily have to rely on that DSer, even though it is a good DSer. And then moving beyond that, we have the focus knob down here, which you see is set to the one, and then there's a two option for 1K and 2K. Now, how I'm gonna implement this is I'm going to come down here. I've duplicated this track. This is the exact same vocal track, and I've got an EQ on it. And again, you can use your stock EQ. And I've sucked out everything low and everything high above the frequency range of around 800 to 1.3. Just kind of give it a range there. So we're focusing in really, really tight on the 1K region here on the vocal. So listen to what that is. Just that by itself with no other processing. And I've got the volume down. Forgive me, guys. Here we go. Because I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us. Okay. So that would be the equivalent of uh, the frequency range around 1K. And then what we could do is we can highlight these two bands if you have the pro Q, and you can slide that up, both of them together, to get kind of where you're focusing on the 2K. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us. Right? So that's pretty rad. We've got the 1K and the 2K, and we're only focusing in on that. Well, now he talks about, Butch does in the video, uh, letting this be kind of a boost there but also compressing against it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my stock compressor again, smashing the junk out of it with 100 to one ratio, limiting, and I'm gonna limit this guy. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us, but. Right, so now it's really in my face. That frequency is nice and flat. It's not going anywhere. And uh, you could take it one step further and you could throw another compressor on it. I've got the 1176 uh, dialed in a medium attack, uh, a pretty quick release. Let's hear that. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there 
Okay, so it's really aggressive. Uh, you may not need to get that aggressive with it, but it sounds pretty cool. Now, what we'd be doing is, let's solo what we were working with up here. Let's solo the focus. I'm gonna drop the focus all the way down, and we're gonna blend it in parallel. So we're gonna add this to what we've already got going on. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us. Okay, and you wanna check when you do this with plugins that you've got your um, delay compensation engaged. And then the other thing is you wanna check for phase. So you might wanna come over here to this plugin and reverse the polarity. You can do that here, or I can go in, excuse me, I like to add the, uh, the stock EQ for check and phase, and I can hit play and reverse it. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there. Okay, and you can hear how whenever I reverse the polarity, it sounds really crazy and washy, right? Really thin, so we know that we're in phase. And then uh, let's hear that again. So here's all the way out, and then we'll blend it in. Cause I want to believe that there's more than what I see out there for us, but it ain't easy when your mind don't work like that. Okay, let's highlight that last section again, and I'm gonna loop it. I'm gonna have it in, and then I'm gonna mute it. It ain't easy when your mind don't work like that. It ain't easy when your mind don't work like that. Okay, so this is a pretty dramatic uh, use of that technique, but to blend 1K in parallel, compressing it a little bit, making sure that it stays nice and tight, very similar to what the focus is doing. I would say this isn't quite as dramatic, but uh, gives you another tool for your arsenal of tools there. So moving away from the focus, uh, and again, one last thing to note, you could take the EQ and uh, you can highlight that and drag it up and whatever frequency you want to focus on or compress really, really tight, uh, you can do that and have the control to, uh, to do it to taste to your specific vocalist. So I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Let's go ahead and put these effects back on and uh, we'll reference against the, uh, put myself on the line here and reference against the Butch lead there. So here's the focus, let's bring that into play. It ain't easy when your mind don't work like that. It ain't easy when your mind don't, 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 don't. Okay, and then without referencing it this whole time, this may sound completely different, but we're gonna give it a shot. So here's these two, and then we're gonna switch. Yep, that's looking good. So here is uh, the butch. It ain't easy when your mind don't work like that. And here's what we did. It ain't easy when your mind don't work like that. Not bad, right? So we've got the compression down, we've got the cleaned up vocal, we've got some color, some saturation. You could probably push it a little bit more to get more in line with the aggressiveness of the other one. The butch vocal sounds a little bit thinner, so you may come in and actually I skipped a band. The, uh, the mid cut on the butch uh, plugin over here We've got that set at what, like 500 hertz or so. And I have this six and a half dB cut at 500 hertz. So I'm gonna engage that. Let's take a listen to what that's doing. It ain't easy when your mind don't work like that. It ain't easy when your mind don't work like that. So there we go. We took a breakdown of the Butch Vig Vocal Signature Series plugin from Waves and uh, broke it down with stock and free plugins. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, tons of options. You could still shape the EQ. You can go in and dial in your compression differently, but hopefully now you understand a little bit better what's going on behind the scenes of some of these signature series plugins, the different parameters, and how you can shape those to the specific vocalist you're working with. I think this plugin's great. I bought it, I own it, I'm gonna be using it. And uh, in the next video, I'm gonna show you a couple ways that I'll be using it, maybe not to what it was created for, but uh, some ways to use it uh, creatively. And then, uh, like always, like, subscribe. We appreciate you for it. Go check out themixacademy.com if you wanna mix this song, I Don't Know, from Nolan Garrett. Check out the, uh, the pro audio files for all of the incredible content over there. And then lastly, we've got mixingvocals.com. If you wanna go super in depth with all of these techniques and multiple styles of music, effect sends and all of that good stuff, mixingvocals.com and we will catch you guys in the next tutorial.